Hey, so what you're about to watch is a private webinar that we only did for a hundred people. Now, due to technical limits, we couldn't make it available for more people, but now we're finally releasing it so you can watch it and it's going to help you pass the PTE exam. So whether you're giving the exam for the first time and you have no idea how it works at all, or if you've given the exam before and you just want to learn some extra tips and tricks and strategies in some of the areas that you're lacking, you're going to find everything in here. Basically, this webinar, we're going to take you through the first question in speaking until the last question in listening. We're going to give you tips for each question. What are the important things you need to know in terms of the marking, the time management, and all of the other strategies that you need to do to pass the exam? Now, keep in mind that this is very compressed. It's about 45 minutes in total. So, of course, we can't teach you everything that we take 20, 30 hours to teach students in class. But if you're just missing by a few points, or if you're just getting started and you have no idea where to begin, you're going to find this extremely, extremely helpful. So stay tuned and you're about to see how to pass the PTE exam on fast speed. All right, all right. Can somebody please let me know in the chat if the sound is okay, if you guys can hear me properly. Yes, yes, yes. Perfect, perfect. So very excited to do this, guys. I'm very excited to see so many people joining today. And just the first couple of seconds, uh, I'm still letting people into the room. But once we reach 100 people, unfortunately, we cannot put anybody else in. So those of you guys here, you're very lucky. Unfortunately, those who didn't make it so far, they will be watching the recording afterwards. So it won't be as exciting. Now, my name is Alex. I'm sure many of you guys have seen our videos on YouTube, on Facebook, and so on. And today, one of our other head teachers, one of our most experienced teachers that you will be seeing, his name is Daniel. So me and Daniel decided to basically give you guys some ideas, some tips, some tricks in a very compressed form on how to pass this exam. We've been getting so many messages from overseas, from Australia, that many of you are planning to immigrate, of course. And now the Australian government started to send more invitations. So if you're planning to immigrate overseas, now is your chance uh, because a lot of people are getting their visas, their PR and so on. So we decided to have the short session to help you guys out. And I wanna manage everybody's expectations first of all. So this is gonna be 45 minutes if we manage to stay on time. I'm sure you guys understand that in 45 minutes, we cannot teach you every single thing that we know because you know usually it takes us like 20 hours to teach somebody. But we decided to either give you some tips if you're just starting with your PTE preparation and you're like totally confused and there's a million videos, there's a lot of different tutors and you don't really know where to start. So we'll go through every section one by one. We'll give you guys some most important tips for each question, how to tackle it, what do you need to know. And this way, if you're preparing, you'll have a very good idea what to focus on. Or if you're somebody who's taken the exam before, and let's say you're just missing in one or two sections. You keep getting 72, 73, but you need 79. I promise you, you will learn at least one or two things in today's lecture that will help you guys take your score over the line, okay? And many of you guys as well were asking us about our classes and things like that. I will mention that at the end. If you do need some help in one section or multiple sections, or you just need some feedback on your previous scores, I will share with you guys the number of our team members. And of course, if you need some advice or some questions or any extra help, you feel free to text us. One last thing before I get started. So after this session as well, all of the things that we mentioned in this lecture, all the things we mentioned like the templates and essay structures and so on, we will send you guys by email. Otherwise in 45 minutes, it's very difficult to cover everything. So you guys will get a lot of bonuses, a lot of things after that as well. Now we do group classes. So we usually actually talk to one another uh, with a video if it's like, five or 10 people, but with you guys, there's a hundred of you here, that's gonna be pretty much impossible. So I do encourage you all to leave comments as we're doing this. So at least it gives us an idea if you're understanding or if you want us to explain something in more detail, or if you're enjoying this or any other questions you may have. So it's gonna give me and Daniel a bit of a guidance so we know if you guys are engaged or not, okay? So let's get started and hopefully you got, um, a notebook and a pen handy. We do recommend taking lots of notes. We will try to cover as much as we can in these 45 minutes. 
Now, I'm going to share my screen with you guys so you have a better idea of what we are talking about. Okay, and you should be able to see my whole screen, I believe. Okay, you can see my messy desktop. And the best thing to show you guys is, of course, uh, we will use a software uh, which gives you an idea about how does PTE work. If you've never given this test before, you do have to have a concept of um, what questions are important or not. So those of you guys that have never given the test before, PTE, like any other English test, has four sections, okay? The major difference is that everything here is connected. I know many of you have trauma from taking IELTS and other English tests, and you're always failing writing, let's say, in IELTS. And you always fail by half a band or by one band because you have a guy like me who's trained to find your mistakes looking for every single mistake, meaning you're getting checked by a human being. PTE is 100% computerized, which is very different from a normal test, but it's much easier if you know how to deal with the system and in a way trick the system in which way you wouldn't be able to do to a human being. So some of the things we'll explain to you guys, um, I know they will not make sense logically, okay? But you need to remember this is not a logical exam. This is a computerized test. And if you see like, let's say our Facebook page, we have people getting eight bands, 79 plus, even 90 every single day. And I promise you, if you watch those people in the testimonies, my students always say, Alex, how did this guy get 90? He can't even speak proper sentences grammatically. So it's not really embarrassing. It's actually true because you can trick the system and your English may not be 90, but you still get 90 in this test because of how it works and because of the repeated exam questions, okay? So keep that in mind. Now, the first section you always start with will be your speaking section. Speaking is the most important section. The reason why, because it also gives you marks in your reading and listening. So some of you are getting 19 speaking, but you're not getting 19 your reading or listening. And maybe your reading itself is good. But if you're not getting the maximum score from here, of course, even if you get perfect in your reading itself, you will never pass reading. So I'll mention where content is important and where it's not important. And I'll just give you guys a brief tip, brief piece of advice for each of these questions, okay? So the first question you'll encounter in your speaking is your read aloud. Those of you guys that have taken the test, you know how this works, but you have some time to prepare. And after your preparation time, you just have to read this text back to the computer. So when we do this in the class with students, some read very fast, some read slow, some go in a very beautiful intonation, up and down, like, like they're reciting a poem. Other people just go very flat, very boring, like a robot. Some stop, some don't stop. So all of these things matter. Now, what you need to keep in mind is two things here. Number one is for your speaking score. Okay, for your speaking score, the most important thing you need to keep in mind is your oral fluency, oral fluency. And what is oral fluency? It's that if the computer was to record your voice, and I'm dropping my little stylus here, but that's okay. If the computer was to record your voice, you would be talking continuously without having a lot of these pauses and interruptions in between. This is oral fluency. So what that means for you to get good score in speaking, you need to talk continuously without long pauses. Of course, if you need to take a a breath, you should take a breath, but you should not stress and emphasize the pause, right? So um, at full stops, you can take a quick breath, but if you have any extra commas in between, you don't need to emphasize that. But in terms of your reading, this question gives you a lot of marks in your reading. So of course your content is important. And basically if you're making mistakes, if you're correcting yourself, if you're skipping S or ED or ING, all of this will affect your content. Now, I'll give you guys a quick demo of how we would do this question, and I'll give you one more tip from where you can practice this as well, okay? So let's say this is my question, okay? Once you've picked a general topic for your paper, you need to come up with a thesis. Your thesis is the main and focal point of your paper, and it's the position you'll take on your particular topic. Formulating a strong thesis is one of the most important things you need to do to ace your paper. Next. And let me know, guys, in the chat, what do you notice about how I'm doing this? What did you notice? There's not a lot of up and down, right? I'm not going, once you pick the general topic for your paper. Yeah, like somebody said in the comments, it's a little bit more plain, a little bit more flat. The reason why some of you have a beautiful accent 
But if you're stressing some of those words and you go, once you pick that general instead of general, right? Or some of you that speak particular languages like Telugu or Tamil, you have a very heavy stress on the words. And when you do this to the computer, what happens is getting a lot of spikes. And these spikes are not good because when they compare you to a native speaker, this is not a typical way in which a native speaker would talk. So my speed was a little bit quick. You guys may find a balance. You may have to go a little bit slower, but the important thing is the flow between the words. So you don't want to go, once you pick a general topic uh, for your paper, you need to, no, don't do this. That's very wrong, okay? And um, if you guys watch our YouTube channel, I recommended one free website. It's called pt.tools. So from there, you can see the percentage is showing you. But of course, for fluency, usually we have like a teacher who assesses the fluency. And we have this on our website as well for our internal students. But PT Tools is just a free website from where you can try and see what's your content. So you should get about 80% or more. Now, let me move on quickly. And the next question will be repeat sentences. You hear the sentence, you speak it back. Professor Smith will be late for today's lecture. I'll wait for the recordings. Professor Smith will be late for today's lecture. So we see a lot of people, me and Daniel, especially when we check the mock test, we see a lot of students, they, they close their eyes and go, Professor Smith will be, but they don't wait for the recording to start. Their audio gets cut off. They lose a ton of marks. If you're writing this down, I want you to write down that repeat sentence is the question which gives you the most marks in the exam. Again, repeat sentence is the question that gives you the most marks in the exam. And the reason why you got 10 to 12 of these, half of your marks go to speaking, half to listening. If you're failing listening, but your writing is pretty good, this is the reason why. And I'm going to give you guys one quick tip because we do have to move on is that it's not about how many words you're getting in total. I could get eight words out of 10 and get a lower score than you if you're only getting six words out of 10. How is that possible? How can somebody get less words and get higher marks? The number one reason, and this has been changed in the PT marking recently, they don't care how many words you got in total anymore. Like before, if I said the words in the wrong order, they didn't care. Now they care how many words you got in the right sequence, in the right order. So it's not about getting nine out of 10 words, right? Or 10 out of 14 words. It's how many words you're getting in sequence. So the most important thing, whether you're taking notes, whether you're memorizing, don't worry so much about getting the whole sentence perfectly. Worry more about getting, let's say, six, seven words in a row. So even if I mess up the ending of a sentence, and I'll give you guys an example. The circulation desk is located on the ground floor. The circulation desk is located in the ground classroom. Next. So what you see I did there, the last two or three words were totally wrong. But the important thing is that I kept talking and I got this circulation desk is located in. And then I said six words correctly, but my last three were wrong. Now, what happens to many failing students that they're getting more words than me, but they are breaking the sequence every three to four words and they fail their listening and they don't know why. My tongue is twisting. They don't know the reason why, okay? So keep that in mind. Now for describe image and retail lecture, this will be next. We will send you guys a few things by email, but the most important thing, because I cannot cover everything in detail now, fluency, 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 fluency in describe image is the most important. You need to mention the words from the picture. Don't say that this is a beautiful picture. It's got red, blue, and yellow color, and yellow is my favorite color. It's a very beautiful picture, and it's got a red color. And don't do that. I know some of you from YouTube, uh, you watched this somewhere and you're just saying nonsense and it used to work. But nowadays you may get caught by the PT software. And if they give you a picture without colors and you're saying blue color, my favorite color, gone right away. So you do need to mention the relevant content. And we'll send you guys some templates after the class. But I'll give you guys an example of how to do this just with our way. For example, 
The given presentation is a bar graph and it is providing the information about Spanish speaking countries by population. The data is measured in the form of population in millions from zero to 100 for different countries. The first country I can see on the screen is Chile, which is showing 20 million approximately. However, the next drastic change is in the middle part of the image in the United States and Spain, and it looks totally different from the previous one. The last country on the screen is Mexico, which shows more than 80 million. Overall, this picture provides a lot of information about Spanish speaking countries by population. Next. This is the fluency with which you have to speak in order to get full marks in your speaking. Accuracy doesn't matter. As long as you use the words from the picture, not some random made up stuff, doesn't matter if you say 85 or 80% or 70%, as long as the word is in the picture should be fine and try to speak for more than 30 seconds. So this is in total 40 seconds. You need to speak for more than 30 seconds and click next. And same concept in retail lecture as I have to hurry up a little bit. So Daniel has the time to speak. I'm sure you guys know how it works. The human development in there. You are taking notes the whole time, of course, and pay attention to the recording as well, because if the audio is short, um, in that case, if you're like snoozing and waiting for the perfect notes, you're gonna miss everything. Write as much as possible. Don't worry about the content if this word is better than the other word, go for volume. Get as much as you can. Don't try to understand that. And of course, we'll send you guys a format after the class. You would just fit your notes into the format and speak what the lecture was about. But you have to have the same fluency like we just did in Describe Images, okay? And last of all, answer short questions before we move on. Very common sense. Would a supermarket, a cafe, or a bookstore probably have the widest range of products available. Wait for the recording. Supermarket, or the answer is supermarket, or it's called supermarket. Just give your answer in a few words. Most important thing, guys, here, do not say, I don't know, or I don't know the answer. This has been changed in the last update in BTE. So if you say, I don't know, or I don't know the answer, you will lose a lot of marks. Avoid that. Try to guess the answer. Try to say as many things that come to your mind, but do not say the words, I don't know, or I don't know the answer. So if you have any more questions about speaking, I can cover it at the end, but I do need to move on to the writing section. And let me introduce one of our awesome teachers, Daniel. Hey, wait, wait, wait. We're gonna get back to the webinar in about 15 seconds. I just wanna ask you one tiny favor. If you're finding this valuable so far, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to our YouTube page because we're about to drop some massive news. As you can see, I've been personally in the studio here, locked forever, recording a lot of new stuff that we're gonna share with you soon. So if you're not subscribed, you're gonna miss out. And if you need any extra help with the exam, with the new changes announced by PTE, with the preparation and with the new updated mock tests, please check the links below. You got our WhatsApp number, you can text us directly with your score, we can give you feedback and help you out, or you can check our practice platform and our mock tests that will help you with your preparation. Now, let's get back to the webinar. Enjoy. Okay, so Daniel, uh, just introduce yourself and let me make you the host right now. Uh, make host. And then, of course, you can switch it back to me afterwards. And just unmute yourself, Daniel, if you don't mind. Yes, hello. This is Daniel. I hope that you can hear me well. Can you hear me? I hope you can. Good, good. Thank you very much. Okay, hello you guys, this is Daniel and I'm going to be explaining a little bit of what uh, it will be like to do the writing section. Just let me share with you my screen for one second. So first of all, what we need to remember is that as mentioned before, this is not going to be graded by a human being, it will be graded by a computer. Okay, so for the writing section, we need to disregard logic. We don't need to use logic for this particular uh, task. So we will have two different tasks in the writing section. However, most of the marks are not actually going to come from the section in particular, because as mentioned before, all of the um, all of the different tasks are actually integrated and they are intertwined. So. Um, we need to remember that for this one in particular, in the summarized written text, that will be uh, one of the important ones in the writing section. 
Um, for the writing, um, for the summarized written text, we are going to get 12 marks each, and we will get two or three of this task in particular, and I will explain how this is going to work. So the summarized written text is we will have a text on the screen, and what we need to do is summarize it in 70 words in one sentence, okay? We just need to, I'm gonna meet one person, sorry. We just need to write it in one sentence, okay? Um, that means one full stop, okay? Uh, so half of the points are going to go for the writing and half of the points, six, are going to go for the reading section. That means that what we need to use are the words from the text. We cannot just use any synonyms. We cannot use our own interpretation of the text. We need to use the words from the text itself, but not just any random words. We need to use the key points. We need to use the key points and we can use the grammar itself from the from the reading we don't need to invent our grammar we can just use the grammar from the text itself okay so i'm going to show you what this will be like in the exam so you will get a text like this as you can see it is sort of lengthy you will get around 10 10 minutes for this in the text as i mentioned before this kind of um items you will get three of them. So when you look at it, you don't really need to understand the entirety of it, but you do need to look for keywords. You use the keywords, you copy the keywords, and you uh, put them you put them into one sentence, and that is going to be saving your life in this uh, in this section. So for the summarized written text, use keywords from the reading itself. You can connect them with connectors, and that is going to be it. Remember that you need to write only 70 words, not more than that, okay? Now, for the essay, what you need to remember is the following. Um, again, this is not going to be graded by a human being. It will be graded by a computer. So logic, again, is not important. However, grammar is important. And for the grammar, we are going to be covering a lot of the grammar in class. And about 30% of it is going to be grammar. So we are going to be working on that in the class. And in your free time, whenever you have free time to study for the PTE test, you should be studying grammar because in this case, grammar is important. You're going to be using words from the question, basically. Just use, try to check keywords from the questions and uh, you are going to come up with synonyms in your mind and you will be using a template and the template is going to provide all the words, the academic words that this uh, test is looking for, okay? So let's look at the reading section. For the reading section, what we are going to be looking at is we need to be careful with the timing in the reading section because there are many different kinds of tasks. In the writing, we only have two kinds of tasks. In the reading section, we have a lot. First of all, we will have the uh, reading and writing fill in the blanks, which will give you two marks per word. One will go for your reading and one will go for your writing. In this, this, in this task in particular, you should be spending no longer than two to three minutes each, okay, for each one of these tasks, okay? For the multiple choice, multiple answers, uh, you will get two or three marks. However, there are negative marks. Uh, we will explain this in class uh, and you shouldn't spend longer than 60 to 90 seconds for each of these, okay? For reorder paragraphs, you um, will be work, wor working for pairs. You just need to look for pairs. It doesn't have to be perfectly uh, or chronologically perfect. Uh, as long as we get pairs, you will be um, spending two to five minutes, uh, two to 2.5 minutes each. For reading fill in the blanks, you will get one mark per word, uh, which is going to go only for your reading. And for multiple choice single answers, you are going to get one mark uh, again. So it you shouldn't 
um, spend longer than 60 seconds. And for this section in particular, also what we are going to be looking at in class is the grammar. And um, we also provide with a lot of materials for you to practice at home. For the reading section, what really, really matters is mostly practicing. And we are going to provide with a lot of materials for you guys to practice, um, especially the ones that are very important um, which are the reading and, and writing fill in the blanks. And um, the ones that are not so important, we are going to spend a little less time on that. And um, just one second, I am going to be, I'm going to pass the, I'm going to make Alex the host again. Okay. All right. Should be okay. Thank you, Daniel. And I'm just going to add a few things to this. Let me turn on my camera so you guys can um, see. Okay. And let me share my screen here again. All right. Everybody should be able to see. Everybody should be able to hear, hopefully. Okay. And uh, one thing I want to mention as well. Um, for the essay, we didn't get into a lot of detail, but if I can just backtrack a little bit and just add on to what Daniel had to say. Logic doesn't matter. Um, it's all about the keywords. It's all about your grammar. It's all about the spelling mistakes. But if you're looking at writing, one thing which is very important, and again, we give you guys, we'll send you a template after class. You don't need to use your brain. You don't need to use your brain. You cram the template. And a lot of our South American students, they hate that. Um, but I know those of you from India, Nepal, Bangladesh, you are good at cramming. You can cram in a day. You memorize the template. This is the painful part. Might take you two to three days. But once you know the template, you can type it in less than 10 minutes. So the extra blanks, the extra four or five sentences that you have to fit in, it's going to be just the key points or the examples that you have to come up by yourself. When you do this, do not try to be overly clever or overly academic or overly intelligent. Sounds counterintuitive, but all the difficult words, vocabulary, grammar is in the template. So when you memorize it and you're adding your own words, keep it stupid simple. I'm sure you guys have heard this acronym, KISS. Keep it stupid simple. The reason why that if you use like complicated metaphors, their software cannot understand that. Um, and I had a student that had an essay about whether watching TV is good for children. And he said, yeah, it was good for children because it broadens their horizons. And he got a low score. And he goes, Alex, how come I know the template, but I got a low score? And I said, because watching TV and broadening horizons to the computer means zilch, right? So the computer is looking for words like television, children, education, information, cartoons, learning, development, knowledge. So if you're talking about broadening horizons, as a human being, we can understand that the computer cannot. So just make sure you are using the words from the question, like discrimination here, a person's age, the workplace. But once you mention them once, try to use synonyms. Instead of workplace, say your place of work or your company, your organization. Instead of discrimination, say unfair behavior, negative behavior, bullying. Instead of promotions, just say advancements at work. Instead of employees or being employed, you can say being hired. So make sure you're not repeating yourself a lot. And for the reading section, again, Daniel gave you guys kind of the breakdown and the timing because it's very difficult for us. I don't imagine how we can teach you reading in 10 minutes, right? So um, reading, it's all about practice. 20 to 30% of that comes from your vocabulary. Uh, 30 to 40% comes from your grammar, which we teach in the class. The rest is from practice. And I'll give you guys an idea. Um, like in the PT database, there's about 1,200 fill-in-the-blank questions and about 300 reorder paragraphs. So out of those questions, when we provide portal access to our internal students, we already collected 1,000 out of the 1,200 fill-in-the-blanks and about 250 out of 300 reorders. So if you're lacking somewhere, if you're really weak, but you're a really hard worker and you're determined, you can make it up in practice. In IELTS, if your writing is 6.5 and you need eight, best of luck. 
you're going to have to study in Cambridge for a while, right? Otherwise, it's hard to jump that much. But MPT, let's say out of 10 fill in the blank questions, students that I get in my class and Daniel's class that actually do the work, they typically get at least three to four questions out of nine or 10 in blanks and at least one question out of two in reorders. That helps a lot because imagine you go to the test and 40 or 50% of the questions you've done before, boom, right? It's way easier. And whatever people don't understand, memorizing for reading in PT doesn't work anymore. I had students in the past that uh, when there's only like 200 or 300 questions, they would cram everything. They see the question, boom, da, 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 da. they don't even look at the options. They memorize them. It doesn't work anymore when there's 1,200 questions, 1,500 questions, 2,000 questions. So what's important also when you're getting the feedback, when somebody actually explains to you, okay, why in this blank it's three years earlier and not three years ago? Well, because if you look earlier here in the text, they tell you a different year. So this year is earlier than the previous year. It cannot be a go because three years ago is 2018. It's not 1985. So things like this, when you don't have the reason, and many of you practice online from different websites, but you go right, wrong, right, wrong, right, wrong. You're not actually understanding why it's right or wrong. So one of the things we're adding as well to our students, uh, we're recording like hundreds of videos in our platform that when they practice and they don't understand, they can rewatch the explanation of how it works because it's hard to like explain 1200 questions one by one to each student. But that's it for reading, takes a lot of practice. If you find yourself struggling in this section, I recommend no matter what, spend one hour per day on reading. 40 to 45 minutes on fill in the blanks, 15 minutes a day on reorder paragraphs, especially the blanks, very, very important. Like 60% of all your marks in reading come from blanks. Reorders, just try to get two pairs out of four, okay? So hopefully that was helpful for you guys. And let me move on to the last section, which is listening. And then we can take some more questions at the end between me and Daniel. So in PT, you have to do speaking, writing, reading nonstop. No breaks, no toilet, no water, nothing. Now, after reading, you have a pop-up that says, would you like to take a 10-minute break? Always take the break. I know some of you are strong men and strong women and you feel like you can make it and you could. But what we see a lot in our classes is that even the very smart, the very intelligent students, they do really well for the first 80, 90% of the exam. They trip at the finish line in the questions that are worth the most marks. They fail, they get depressed, and they want to give up. So take the break. I literally, during my test, I, I would go to the bathroom. I'd like splash myself, you know, slap myself so I'm awake, drink some water in their reception in their lobby. And once you go back in, you are focused. Because it's hard to take a three-hour test and maintain your focus the whole time, especially in listening. The last few questions are worth a lot of marks, and it's easy to slip up and to blank for a second, and you miss your spot in the audio, and you're gone. So take the break, and when you start the break, the most important thing in listening, it's all about your time management. So we do recommend taking lots of mock tests. Uh, like usually our internal students give five to eight mock tests just to get used to the pattern, the structure. One of the problems and with in primary listening, teaching. And in listening, the first question summarize spoken text, similar to retail lecture. Take lots of notes. Uh, when the audio is finished, you're going to write the summary instead of speaking the summary. So, of course, if you develop that skill in retail lecture, um, it's much easier here. And the biggest piece of advice I can give you guys without going into too much detail if you feel like your grammar is not that strong. In retail lecture, you can get away with writing just a few words at a time. One, two words, two, three words, four, five, whatever. Here, if your grammar is bad, try to get bigger chunks of words. Four or five words, four or five words. Four or five words, four or five words. Four or five words, four or five words. And join them together. And again, don't worry so much about, is this important? Is this an example? Is this the topic? No, 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 no. Just go for quantity. Remember four or five words, write it down. So for example. Then teach it. If art is your thing, go for it. Children will be motivated by teachers who are passionate about what they are doing. This doesn't negate the need for primary teachers to be solid in a range of areas, but it does try to acknowledge the simple fact that no one is good at everything. Okay, and just to give you guys an idea, 
like I'm not trying to remember the whole sentence. It's very difficult. But I would just write four or five words, four or five words, four or five words. And then again, within a format, it's easier to join them together. And my grammar is going to be better because I'm using their grammar, not my grammar. So I can say, uh, moreover, children will be motivated. And this can negate the need for primary teachers. In conclusion, they said that no one is good at everything. So you see, if you're getting good notes and you're using their grammar, it makes your job easier. So don't try to be too logical. Just practice your note taking. I'd rather have too many notes and have a wide variety to choose from than struggle and try to understand and not get enough content and then try to make it up on the spot. And yes, somebody asked, they do give you pen and paper. But again, I don't want to write. I just wanted to show you guys a quicker example. So summarize spoken text, what you need to remember, it has its own individual time. In listening, somewhere in the top corner, you get the total time, 45, 50 minutes. But this question has a secondary timer down here. That means you can spend your full 10 minutes without worrying about the rest. And what that means that if you finish in five minutes and you go next, they will not give you extra marks, sorry, they will not give you extra time for the other questions. So if you uh, took five minutes, take your time, spend the extra five minutes checking your work, making sure you don't have any mistakes. But once you finish the summarized spoken text, you have to be quick, 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 because you need to save enough time for the last question, which is the most important, and it's called write from dictation. And I'll show you guys briefly the other questions. So once I finish this summary spoken text, I need to manage my time quickly. And I would write this down as well. For multiple choice, choose multiple answer. Um, I don't care how many you get right or wrong. I don't care if you just pick one. Do not spend more than five to 10 seconds maximum. The audio is finished. You pick an answer, you move on. Even if it's just one answer, you can still get even 90 by picking one answer. And... Um, Look, all of you guys here are smart enough to be able to read the text and the options while the audio is playing. So most of you will have at least one answer already that you know, and it's best to stick with one and go next, then pick one right and one wrong and get negative marks and you are gone. Okay, fill in the blanks. Uh, a few quick tips. Again, as they say the words, you have to type them in the box. Be very careful. Thanks for making. Some of these audios are very quick or the noise has like kind of like background, you know, so quality could not be uh, amazing sometimes. I'm good at typing personally, but here I don't dare to type because it's very easy to lose your spot and the voice changes or the audio changes or there's some interference and you miss your spot and you miss the last couple of words. I literally pretend, I tell my students to pretend like they're back in kindergarten. Follow quickly with your finger, write it down. Don't look away for too long. Okay, next, write it down. Worry about the spelling after, okay, and write it down. And at the end, spend 15, 20 seconds to type your five or six words. Very, very important, guys. Do not trust what you hear. Do not trust what you hear. We are overly confident. We think, oh, that's easy. But with a British accent, especially even for me, depends which part they're from, I cannot understand what these people say. They don't say proper, like I'm Canadian. Daniel has very good English. He's very clear. They will say proper. They say papa, huh? Right? Uh, or oftentimes they don't emphasize E, D, I, and G. Oh yeah, I was educated in London, huh? So when native speakers talk to one another, we know that they say educated. But when you guys listen to that, it's easy to miss S and E, D. So the biggest piece of advice I can give you here don't trust what you heard. Instead, check grammatically. So if I have here, let's say I missed in those two labs something. Could be classes, sessions, seminars, but they will not emphasize the S. Your job to check grammatically that if it's two, it has to be plural. Uh, if you can't hear ED or S, but you know it has to be S or ED grammatically, check the grammar of the text quickly to identify if you're missing that or not, okay? Other questions, highlight correct summary. Again, there's a few different tricks for this, but it's gonna take too long to show you depending on different audios. The most important thing, 
after the audio uh, the question why do students achieve don't so spend much? more than 30 seconds okay uh, this question is kind of important it gives you marks in reading as well just don't spend more than 30 seconds multiple choice to single answer five seconds next and select missing word this is when the one that's similar it's not important only gives you one mark when they finish the audio with a beep pick the word that fits in there and move on right away because it's either obvious and you will know the answer or you have no idea so there's no point to waste your time and the last two tasks highlighting correct words you have to be careful it has negative marks so of course they will play the audio you have to pick which words were different from the audio the UN Charter comprises a preamble and 19 chapters divided into 111 articles. The Charter sets forth the purposes of the UN. So this is just an example. They said sets forth. Here it's written sets out. Anytime you hear the word is different, you click on it. That becomes your answer. You might get three, four, even five or six of these words. Uh, but because they let you pick as many as you want, this question has negative marks. So if you made a mistake, you can untick it, but be careful not to go in and pick a lot of extras. And um, this is the question I notice a lot of times people completely lose their focus and they, um, um, you know, if they don't take a break, especially they just lose their spot in the audio. And because of that, they fail the text. So uh, fail the whole exam. So just take a break, maintain your focus, follow with your finger, with your mouse. And if you're not sure, better to leave it and not pick it, then to go and pick something extra, okay? And you always need to remember before we wrap up, we've got about five minutes left, and then me and Daniel both have classes at um, in 20 minutes. So uh, we have to keep this brief. The last question, most important question is always write from dictation. If you guys have seen any of our YouTube videos, we never shut up about this question because it doesn't matter how well you did to this point, if you don't perform in dictation, get ready to pay another three, four hundred dollars for your test. And how you know this, please write this down. You will always get either three or four questions, three or four dictations. Don't count on getting three. Prepare for four. Expect four. You should be over prepared. OK, and how you know this when they tell you the total number of questions in the corner somewhere in the test, you can count backwards. So if here in this exam, I have 20 listening questions. I know that 20, 19, 18, 17 could be dictation. Meaning as you approach question 17, so whenever this task is done, I will get mentally prepared that dictation is next. So maybe this is the only time you can take a quick break. And if you manage your time well, as we discussed so far, you should have minimum five minutes saved for your last three to four questions. Four could be okay. If you got three or two minutes, ugh, you're gonna have to be very quick. And I recommend practicing doing lots of mock tests and this, uh, this will help you guys a lot. But anyways, this question is done. Before I go to the next task, I know it's dictation. I always flip my notebook to a new page. I always check the markers, make sure that they are writing. If you don't keep the cap closed, they dry out very easily and um, people start writing and go, oh, what happened? and they forget their whole audio, they miss everything, okay? So be ready, check your marker, be ready to go, because when you go next, okay, this is not dictation, so I know the last three will be dictations. You have to be ready to go, and I will take the notes here, but you will write, obviously. There was little available evidence to contradict his viewpoint. Contradict his viewpoint. So there was little available evidence to contradict his viewpoint. So as you guys can see, whether you're writing by hand or typing, for the first couple of words, I kind of was able to keep up with the audio, but the last three, four words, I can't keep up. So the last three, four, five words, I just repeat to contradict his viewpoint, to contradict his viewpoint. Here, just as repeat sentences, you can probably guess sequence is very, 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 very important. If the words are missing or added extra, it's not in the right sequence, all of this will affect your score. And there's a lot of exceptions. There's a lot of kind of rules and things we teach in the class how to overcome that. Um, again, like usually we go through 20, 30 examples in the class. Uh, it's hard to explain this, but 
Look, if you think you missed something, take a guess, but don't skip words. Most importantly, guys, because we have to wrap up soon. Most importantly, I know people that join our classes, they always ask, Alex, I saw this video. Can I write two versions? Uh, if I'm not sure about uh, was or is, can I write both? No, do not do that. Check the dates of those videos. A lot of them are from a year or more ago. And I, had, I was pissed. Last year, I had a few students that did that and they didn't tell me. And I hate when students like follow our guidelines and then last moment they listen to their cousin and they change everything. It's like, man, you're paying money for the class and everything, like you're trusting us. Why do you change things before the exam? So I had the student, Akilesh, and he failed and he passed his speaking and reading, listening and writing gone, like in the 60s. I said, man, what did you do? Oh, Alex, I did what you told me for dictation. I said, what, what was the sentence? What did you write? And he wrote, the professor professors is where, uh, not able to come to go to today's tomorrow's class course. I said, oh my God, man, don't come back. Don't, don't sit in front of me ever again if you do this. So he watched some video or he listened to his cousin and that used to work for about two, three months. Or if you're not sure about singular plural or spelling, you'd write multiple versions and you used to pass. After two, three months, we discovered that PTE patched that glitch. They fixed that error. And people kept doing this for months afterwards, but they kept failing their listening and writing. And then they wonder why. So guys, here sequence is important. Even if you write the wrong word, take a guess, try to replace it, try to maintain the sequence as much as possible. The sentence has to be grammatically correct, of course. So you can always check it in this way. This is the question that is the most important individually. Like repeat sentences, because there's 10, you have to practice them, but you can mess up two or three or four and still get 79 or 90. Dictation, because one question gives you so many marks, like this question alone will give you nine marks in your listening, nine in your writing. So if you miss it completely, you mess it up, you may not get 79. The good thing is these always come repeated from the materials. So like in the class, whenever students practice, they get always two out of three or three out of four or three out of three or four out of four from the list that we give them and from the prediction file before the test. So if you're struggling here, but you're hardworking and you practice and you listen to them all the time, you guys will pass, no doubt. OK, so that's pretty much it. I know there's a lot of stuff we kind of covered uh, for you guys um, in a short period of time, but I personally have a class in 14 minutes, so I'm going to have to go. Uh, let me wrap up with a few things, okay? Number one is if you're practicing two hours per day, you can pass this test very easily with 65 or even 79, but you need to give it, this is going to be important, you need to give it about six weeks of practice. If you're putting in six weeks daily, two hours, you will pass. And if you specifically practice the following questions, okay? We're not done yet, guys. I would spend one hour every day on reading and let's say 40 minutes on, like I said, FIBs, and let's say 20 minutes on reorder paragraphs. You should be spending 30 minutes daily on speaking. And I would break it down as 15 minutes for repeat sentence. Because after you memorize the describe image and retail lecture templates, um, you know, that's very easy. And 15 minutes for read aloud to improve your content. And the last thing, daily 30 minutes for write from dictation as this is the most important question in the whole exam. And I'm gonna leave you guys with a few other links and resources. So just, by the way, take a screenshot for this if you want to. And I'm just gonna type quickly the uh, something else. Uh, uh, just give me a second, take a screenshot guys. And I'm just typing something uh, afterwards, okay. And um, you can feel free to ask as well any questions that you may have in the chat so we can cover it briefly. And bear with me for a second. We're gonna send you guys a lot of templates as well. So we already have your emails. Um, 3058115, okay. All right, let me wrap up with the last thing I wanna wrap up with. Again, guys, we're doing this class for free. Uh, we're obviously not getting anything out of it. We just wanted to give you guys some value. Uh, but 
a lot of you are messaging us, you're asking us, how can I practice? Where can I practice? And so on. So look, a lot of these things are enough for you to pass on your own. Some of you are very smart, have very good English, and maybe you're, uh, you just need a little bit of guidance. A lot of you guys are asking us for different courses. So if you want to practice with mock tests, this is the link. And in the email within one or two hours, we'll send you guys like a promo, like a big discount code if you want to try it. And just even try one and see what your score is. Text it to our team and they'll give you some advice. If you've given the exam before and you're missing in one, two sections, add this number on WhatsApp, okay? And text our team and they will reply to you with the feedback where you need extra help. If you're struggling in one or two sections only and you just want to take one or two classes just to help you in summarize spoken text, summarize written text or reorders, we got one-on-one -on -one classes weekdays and weekends and we have new batches starting from, I believe, next uh, week. So anything you guys need, please take a screenshot, save this number. This is uh, one of our team members. They will look after you. And um, sometimes I know many of you struggle in speaking because of low pronunciation or low pitch. Feel free to send a few sample audios and your previous score to our team on this number. And uh, we will personally listen to it and give you feedback where you are lacking. Uh, hopefully this was helpful, guys. Keep an eye out for um, an email with the templates and a few discounts and promos, things like that. And keep an eye out on our YouTube, guys. In the next two weeks, we'll have a massive announcement, something we're bringing that nobody has done in PTE before. Uh, like it's going to make your life super easy to pass this test from anywhere. Like you can sit at home and pass it in like four weeks. Keep an eye on our YouTube. We'll be posting a lot of videos soon and we'll reveal the big announcement, okay? This is it, guys. So Alex and Daniel from Dream English, hopefully you enjoyed the session. Uh, any other question uh, about classes I see, just text this number on WhatsApp, take a screenshot and um, enjoy guys. Let us know that when you pass the test, if you're doing self-study, text us, let us know. If you need help, text us, let us know. And uh, all the best guys, uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.